Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. It is Friday, May the 8th, and back by popular demand is my wife, uh, who was uh, with me yesterday, and uh, all of you, I'm sure, uh, enjoyed that and were blessed by that. And again, we're here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and as I said yesterday, it was hard for me to imagine uh, doing a, a whole couple of weeks, actually two weeks, on 1 Corinthians 13 without including her, uh, because when I think of, uh, obviously, the people in my life that I love, uh, physically, human beings, uh, so to speak. Uh, my wife, obviously, is at the top of that list. I'm certainly thankful for her. The Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 13, And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. You know, everybody has a story, right? And uh, we have one that I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we thought we'd talk a little bit about how we met and how the Lord has brought us to this point, maybe some things that he's taught us along the way. Uh, this year, this August, will be 20 years of marriage. We got married in August of 2000, and so August of 2020 obviously brings us to that 20-year anniversary. And uh, we had big plans for a uh, for a getaway, and then coronavirus Corona. <laughs> kind of took over, and uh, those plans have been put on hold at this point in time, and uh, we're still waiting to see how we're going to uh, to celebrate. Um, but give, give us from your perspective, we met in sixth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, tell us a little bit about how you ended up, how our paths ended up crossing. Just just briefly, if you could. Um, the very first time we met? Well, the school, in the school. Okay, in the school. Um, so I went to the Arabic Baptist Church, and uh, my pastor, Fauzi Kawaja, he has uh, five kids, and they were all um, in, at Heritage Christian School. So uh, I was in public school at the time. I um, was in Lakewood, and once you get to sixth grade, that starts junior high. Well, in our Christian school, that's not it's still elementary, but we lived by a uh, junior high, and my mom would always see the kids um, beating up on each other. <laughs> on their way home from, from school, and my mom was like, you're not going to that school. <laughs> and so she's like, you're going to go to Esther's school. That was um, one of the pastor's daughters. Her name was Esther. So I did not want to go. I wanted to go where my friends were, and I wanted to stay with them. And I really like kind of pitched a fit about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe. <laughs> um, but then I, I don't know, like it was like a, something snapped in my head for the good, and I was like, you know, yeah, I'll go. And I went, and I met you. First day. We were both in sixth grade. That would have been, what, 1990 or 91? I think that might have been the fall of 91. Yeah, 1991. Something like that in that ballpark. And uh, yeah. for whatever reason, I can't explain it. Nobody can explain it. But you started to like me right away. Yeah. What was it? What was it about? What was it about me? Tell all of our listeners what it was about me. <laughs> there was a girl in, in our class, Jennifer. Um, I don't know if you remember her, but she was like, do you know Peter Folger? And I said, no. And she goes, well, he likes you. And I'm like, who hmm. is he? <laughs> and she's like, he's that guy with the really long eyelashes. <laughs> 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 so, um, and then um, I've tried, I was trying to figure out how you knew me. So his dad would come preach at our Arabic Baptist church. And I remember a young family coming and they were like three brothers. And they were like stair steps. That was and us. So that was you guys. And so I us. had met you, but not really. So our paths had crossed, but we had not officially probably spoken to each other. The thing that that um, was was to me was interesting about her um, was I hope you don't mind me telling this, but she had the longest hair. I don't think at that point, sixth grade, you didn't even have some, any type of haircut yet. Maybe no. just like a little trim or something. No, I used to sit on it. Yeah, I mean, it was really, really long. And I had I don't know that I'd ever seen anybody that had oh, that Oh, so long that's hair. why you were staring at me. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, maybe. It was it was interesting to me, you know, sixth grade. And, you know, I didn't I didn't know much know much else. So, um, And then from there, obviously, we went through junior high together and then high school. And I think it was around 10th grade in which mm -hmm. we really sort of clicked, you know. And we, I mean, we obviously knew each other and we were friends and that sort of thing. But something happened in 10th grade yeah. that really um, sort of was, you know, whatever. And, uh, and we never recovered from that, I don't suppose, did we? No, no recovery. <laughs> the ship sailed. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then, uh, then I went off to Bible college my freshman year. You believe that the Lord wanted you to go to school. Uh, but you, uh, your parents weren't so sure about that at that point in time. So she was trying to be submissive to them. 
And eventually they uh, were in agreement with you that it was mm-hmm. okay for you to go off to Bible college. And so we joined together in my second year, but we weren't really even together at that point in time, but the Lord did a work mm-hmm. there. And, yep. and uh, we ended up uh, getting married. God's blessed us with four awesome kids. You heard a little bit about them yesterday. And um, we came back here to serve as just the youth director. Uh, and we did that for 14 years together, mm-hmm. uh, built a family during that time. And, uh, and then we just kind of moved out of that. We started working with adults. What's it like? Have you, can you even put into words what it's like to be a pastor's wife? I think you were made to do that. Uh, I think sometimes you wonder about that, but I think mm-hmm. you were, were created for that. Uh, but what's it been like for you to be the, the, the pastor's wife here? Oh, man, that's a tough question. I didn't warn you about that one either, you didn't, did I? definitely didn't warn me. Um, it, it, for, it just feels like I'm Pete's wife. Um, that's the idea. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just look at it as I'm Pete's wife, Madison, Mallory, Mia, Toby's mom. Um, I just try to do what I'm told, <laughs> do what needs to be done. And, um, you know, if I can be a help to people, I try to help. I try to encourage people. Um, I like to, you know, I like when people speak words of life to me, so I like to try to do that back. But, yeah, I mean, it's a little scary. Um, you know, you, you always want to make sure you're saying the right thing and leading people right, even if you don't think you're leading people. You, you kind of, Sometimes you are. So I just, I don't know, just keep trusting the Lord and following forward. Well, and I don't, I don't know that anybody, you know, probably thinks about this, but the, the pastor's wife really is an influential person because, um, you know, she obviously um, is the one that should have the ear of the pastor more than anybody else. And so she'll say things to me, and <laughs> a lot of times I'll pretend like it doesn't make an impact. Like, I already thought, I already knew that. I already thought that before. But in reality, I'm like, oh, that's really good advice, and I probably will do that. Um, when it comes to, you know, again, the, the building of the team here, Um, you know, I'm very interested in what she thinks. And so I'll say something like, Hey, I'm thinking about asking this person to do this or, you know, and, and, and I, I, what I really want is I want her approval. I want you to say, that's a great idea. And when you do, I'm fairly confident it's a great idea. Uh, if there's, if there's any hesitance, it causes me to think, Oh, maybe, you know, maybe I'm off here. So really the pastor's wife does have influence, but, but you know, you're right. We, and we, we talk about this. But we're not really not all that into titles. I mean, no. we are who we are. We're normal, average, ordinary people. We live in a simple little house, four miles from the church. We, um, you know, we, I don't know, we're pretty, we're pretty normal. I think we're, we're kind normal. of boring, probably. Boring, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but we do love our life that God has given to us. Um, if we had to do it all over again, we would, mm-hmm. right? I have no complaints whatsoever. Um, and uh, the life that God has given us, the love that God has given us for one another is incredible. I am totally and completely satisfied and happy as a married man, and I think you would say the same thing. I, I'm saying it. I yes. hope you would say the same I thing. Agree. Me too. <laughs> we have our moments, as, as any married couple does. What is one thing that you learned about marriage that perhaps you didn't know going into it? You know, I, well, we were so young. We were 21 when we got married and I went straight from my parents' home into Bible college and right into marriage. So I always had roommates. So, um, (laughs) it seemed easy. I just became another roommate. I became another roommate. I'm like, Oh, I get to be roommates with my favorite person. Um, I think I had this vision that we were going to have a date every night and there weren't bills. I mean, I knew there were bills. (laughs) But the, the, I didn't picture them. Uh, I didn't picture being sick in front of you. <laughs> uh, just things like that. Like you, you just have this Disney thinking. I mean, I did. Um, but I, I think we learned together. We did. You know? We grew together. I, yeah, I didn't feel question. like there was any jarring, whoa, difficulties. Because yeah. we, we were sort of just kids. Yeah, I feel like we were both still growing, so it worked out that we were growing at the same time together. And there was a period of about three years uh, in between when we got married and when the Lord gave us our first child, so that was a, a good time for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, But yeah, it's, it's great. I tell, I tell young married couples who sit in my office for premarital counseling, that sort of thing, that um, you know, marriage done right is the greatest thing in the world. It really is. And I believe that uh, very sincerely. Because I'm living that, you know, you marry the right person who loves the Lord, 
and who loves you, and uh, and certainly that is you know that is you, and uh, so um, it's wonderful, it's great. And, um, and the greatest of these, the greatest of these is charity. And certainly we would, we would say a, whole, a, a, a grand amen to that as, mm-hmm. uh, as a married couple. And obviously that's talking about biblical love. But in this context, it fits too. Um, you know, there's a lot of things people think about marriage, uh, people envision about marriage. But, but truthfully, if two people love each other uh, with a Christ-like love, uh, they can weather any storm and they can handle anything that life throws their way, including a pandemic. And uh, so thanks so much for, for joining us. Sure. Um, so I will, t- I will tell you as we're finishing up, we are moving into uh, a new phase now. And many of you are following and you know that the Cleveland Baptist Church is going to reopen on Sunday, May the 17th. And of course, we began to do this every weekday because of what we were in. And, and we realized that folks weren't going to be able to come to church like they normally did, Sunday school, that sort of thing. So we are altering just a little bit the way that we're going to be releasing these. We will not be releasing them every single day, every single weekday. And so you're sort of appearing not on the last one, but on the last one during this time. So I think that's kind of cool uh, that it worked out that way. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more on Monday about how we're going to, uh, you know, how often we're going to do these. And uh, but, but we've heard from so many of you saying that we'd like for you to keep doing this. And so we will. And uh, we're planning on that. Uh, and uh, we're going to turn this into an actual podcast. It'll still be released in this form, but you'll be able to take it with you on your phone and that sort of thing, download it, maybe make it a little bit more mobile. We hope that that'll be a help to you. But thanks so much for joining us uh, for today's uh, episode of Grace and Truth for Today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's, start, we're, 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 let's finish this day, I should say, with a word of prayer, and then we'll let you get about your day. Father, thank you again for this wonderful day that you've given to us. Lord, thank you for love, and I thank you for... Um, the wife that you have given to me. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless her today, bless our family today, Lord, bless all of the individuals who will watch this. And uh, Lord, we pray that you'd meet their needs and provide for them. Uh, Lord, we thank you again for the story that you write in our lives. And Lord, if we'll allow you to write it, uh, Lord, we'll have no regrets. It will be a wonderful thing, a beautiful thing, and we thank you for it. Lord, thank you for bringing us through this time. We realize that we're not at the end of it, uh, but Lord, we are beginning to... Uh, Lord, adjust some things of how we're doing ministry. We pray that you would bless those things. And uh, Lord, that you would lead us and that you would guide us. Thank you for those that have watched these faithfully each and every day. And uh, Lord, I pray that they've been encouraged through them. Pray again you'd meet our needs. Bless our church family. Uh, Lord, bless our country. Give wisdom to our nation's leaders, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for tuning in. If this has been a blessing, we'd encourage you to share it with others. God bless. Have a great day. Okay. Done.